You good? I'm good. All right. Good. Sound man. Three, two, one. Slap your baby, huff some oil, it's time for baby oil. Baby oil and blow, damn, I was so close. Baby. Yeah, you're trying to get that Triple H. Uh, yeah, no, baby oil and blow. No, I was right. Trying to get Triple yeah. H excited, right? One of these days, he, I'm going to learn. He happens to listen to this, and he's like, well, he does. I like how this is starting. Uh, I can call him Paul, you call him H. He listens to this show, big fan. He and Steph. Wait, Big Show listens too? Big Show listens too. Paul... And Steph lift weights in their basement at midnight with their oversized dog. While uh, oh, I see that Big you've Show, been looking at their Instagram. Big Show sits down there and says words of encouragement, and they listen to Baby Oil and Blow. Steph's been pushing the sled a lot lately. I think she's <laughs> I think she's training for a big mania match. Is that a euphemism? I don't want to talk out of turn. Is that a euphemism? This is all the kids are doing. Pushing now. the pushing the sled. It's a big thing at the uh, gym. She's pushing the sled. She's oh. trying to be young. Well, we can introduce ourselves. Uh, it's me, it's me, it's big time. Matt O with me as always. Oh, you're going to get to be uh, Cougar J to my Tommy Angel this week. Oh, hoy hoy to that. Yeah. That's big the two Adams. coolest ring names ever. Natonio Back Adams at us. is That's, the real name. Makes me sound a lot more swarthy than I am. I'll take it. Uh, let, me, let me drink a little bit of this beer here. What kind of beer do we have today? Um, what kind of... We got some sponsorships going? Oh, that's bitter. This is from the fine folks at Devil's Trumpet in oh, wow. Merrillville, Indiana. Space Caravan IPA. Next not, time. not for the faint of heart. Next time you're feeling like getting a little bit out there, huh? That's got balls, baby. Space Caravan. Today, he's Devil's Trumpet. Yeah, it's they're, an IPA. They're funding that rundown. It's fun. They're funding the rundown? They're offsetting that, uh, offsetting Stifler and, uh, you know, just taking a little bit of the heat off of him. Before we do the rundown, can I tell you a few thoughts? Be sure. About, just on the week. Wait, it depends on about what. First of all, that, that, uh. You're talking about those Russian indictments? Is that what you're going to get into? No, those, those got settled out oh, of okay. court. There's the, the Tide Pod Challenge. I've seen a lot of headlines about kids trying to eat Tide Pods. Okay, apparently. something different? Yeah, apparently that's a thing of the past. Uh huh. I got a big jug of Tide Pods back in the laundry room. If we want to go grab them, yeah, later. Just like we're we gonna do one of those shock jock like on air things that like, you know, turn uh, man cow would do back in the mid nineties. I'm a little hardcore, a little more hardcore. I bang rails a comet instead. Okay, that makes a lot of you sense. You want to get in on that? I just like to rub it on my gum line. There you go. Apparently, it takes the edge uh, off. G or F Lister Black China. Are you familiar? No. <laughs> She's like a stripper and then I think was banging a, the male Kardashian. I, she's aligned herself with rappers. And does she look like and she gets herself. wrestler China, but a black, one of the blacks? Unfortunately, no. <laughs> one of the blacks. Uh, no. She just looks like a stripper from Atlanta. Okay. But her name's Black China. Either way, she, yeah, cool. she had a sex tape drop. It's hot Atlanta, by the way. Yeah, hot Lana. She had a sex... Wait, a sex tape dropped and I don't know about it? Well, here's the big deal about it. No, no, we gotta pause this no, thing. No, here's the real big deal. Apparently, kids are hitting Twitter with the blowjob challenge. Hmm, that's different from the Tide Pod challenge. So apparently, high school kids, they're giving up, eating chemicals, mm -hmm. and they're just getting back. Next step? To just... Getting nasty, freak nasty. Okay, so what's is this similar to all of those news reports in the early two thousands about the girls that were wearing like the bracelets, and if you ripped off their bracelets, they no. had to do. 
I love these like every 10 years or so, just like terrorize parents in the Midwest stories that come out of like what teenagers are doing because like one no. teenager did it somewhere. I think you're just... It's just come on, there was sex bands. I know all about it. Yeah, but I think this just means we're going to get... I used to ask my teenage employees about it. So these sex bands, is that really a thing? How many of those sex those bands bracelets you got? you got on sex bands? You can tell me. I'm like the cool uncle. What do you think you're trying to pull here? Yeah. I don't want you involved in this whole sex band ring. I'm guessing what this means is we're just going to get inundated with even more amateur blowjob vids okay, on the so internet. Okay, so this has got something to do with Black China's sex tape. This isn't all linking up in my head yet. I guess, I don't know. I'm just, it's, it's, it's. What's the blowjob challenge? It's a big headline. Like, I don't have all the details yet. I just want to hey, be the first I, to talk I dare about you it. to give me a blowjob yeah. because if that's as easy it is. And then like, some scumbag kids have finally film, cracked yeah. that code and that's working for kids these days. Well, I think, Jeez. Yeah, I think it's like you're an 18 year old boy and you're like, hey, you want to prove you're really good? Yeah. Just I'll videotape this. We'll put this on the internet. Wow. You know, you real deal or not. Girls, don't fall for that. You don't want to be giving these teenagers blowjobs. No, no. They're scumbags. But uh, the, the other big news. Have a mind of your own. Related to the world of wrestling. Okay. Double J, man. He's going in. Jeff Jarrett is going, yeah. is he indicted? That uh, whole cash for gold scam yeah, thing got, fell apart? And... He got indicted into the WWE Hall of Fame. Oh, man, That's the word, right? Funneling his gold money through Deutsche Bank. Turns out he owes a lot to those Russians. It's all tied together. All of it. It's all tied in. That's impressive. What do you think about that, man? Your guy, Double J. Uh, well, I my number one concern is the Hall of Fame presentation. They're okay. putting Jeff Jarrett in. Yeah. Like, uh, well, a little offshoot before I get there. Who's going to induct him? Oh, man. Owen Hart. Mm. I think it should be Kurt. You think it's Kurt? I think it's got to be like, you stole my wife. You're a legend. You you son of a bitch. Here you go. She made you an Alki just like she made me an Alki. Yeah. We've lived this together. Way to complete that WWE rehab. We got this new management over there at Impact Wrestling. Mm -hmm. They, uh, you know, I'm reading these headlines. I keep up with the headlines. Well, we I don't watch Scotty, the wrestling anymore, but I'm Scotty keeping up with the headlines. Uh, yeah, Scott Demore is it, and uh, is it worse? Cyrus the Virus. They're it, in charge over there at Anthem. Is it worse that we follow wrestling through reading it? Rather than actually watching it? Yeah. No, because it takes much less time out okay. of the day. So right. it's, it's well, better. It's I've, quite better. I'm going to keep feeling good about myself. But I've been reading about what they're doing. Yeah, they've we got, got the new, new policies where they're letting people own their own characters. That's smart. They signed all that shit back to Matt Hardy, all the dumb shit he was doing that everybody liked because of this meme culture internet dumb dumb shit. Yep. So, um, are they going to cut a deal with the WWF to let them license some footage of MMA Double J, Ooh. the greatest thing Jeff Jarrett did in his wrestling career? Uh, obviously, the word has traveled real fast of my newfound love of MMA. And, uh, you know, I hope you guys, uh, you'll never reach my level, but you're, you're starting young and, and you could aspire to come close to my level. We're not going to be doing uh, any karate today. We're going to be talking more submissions, more along the lines of, of what I've perfected, uh, what Samoa Joe, Kurt Angle uh, have attempted for their entire life. Uh, to gain the knowledge that I've quite frankly mastered in a matter of uh, weeks. First things first, I need to find out where you're at, where your skill level at, how, what have you perfected, what have you not perfected. Uh, who knows the move, whether it be a rear neck or choke, uh, uh, arm bar. Yes, I know the ankle lock. Oh, little guy, so you know the ankle lock, huh? Well, do you know who perfected it? Kurt Angle. No, it's not Kurt Angle. He ripped it off. Ken Shamrock made it famous, but I perfected it. Well, why don't you put it on me? Why don't you put it on me? See what you got. See what you got. Is that all you got? Is that a str What a wimp you are. Can you not twist any harder than that? Is that all you got? Harder. Get out of here. Let, let me show you how this is done. Come here, kid. I could break this ankle in two if I had to. Come here. Get over here. Quit moving. Can you feel it? What's happened if you can feel it? I don't think it hurts bad enough. I literally perfected this in weeks. This is an arm bar, little lady. Can you feel it? Yeah. Can you feel it? Yes. I perfected this move in two days. Tap that mat. This is a leg bar, kid. Can you feel that pain? Ow. Huh? Happy Thanksgiving, kids. You got an awful lot to work on. An awful lot to work on. Yeah, that kind of brings me to my next question. Yeah, I want for that you. video to be like 50% like him putting random women in figure fours when he's doing his wife yeah. beater gimmick in WWF, and the other half just to be that MMA double J shit, him putting leg locks and ankle was, holds on just, little children. I was just going to ask you. I don't know if they still do it. Maybe but throwing a few slap nuts. In the, the, in the baseball hall of fame. Hey, Matt. Yeah? Just hold on a second. 
Don't piss me off. That's right. Don't piss me Remember off. He's getting that over as a big Hell catchphrase. Yeah. You know what pisses me off? World hunger, holy wars, politics, mm -hmm. ugly women in politics, mass and all Janet Green, pigs. You know what else pisses me off? Women with semen stained dresses. Women. Semen stained dresses. Poor pigs. That really pisses me off. Hillary Clinton, stand by your man. You really pisses me off. Everybody was chanting it along in the crowds. Uh, I forgot. I'm it was gonna, like wildfire. Everybody on on board of that. Don't piss me off. I'm gonna race. have to bing it in the commercial break. It's a legendary career there, Jeff Jarrett. They had the uh, WWF toys at the time, and oh, they sure they couldn't for whatever merchandising, reason merchandising merchandising. They couldn't for whatever reason put "Don't piss me off" on his shirt, even though oh, that's wow. what his shirt said. So it said something like stupid, like "Don't make me mad." Don't pass me by. Yeah, don't pass me by. Uh, anyways, in Major League Baseball, when you go into the Hall of Fame, mm -hmm. if you played for like multiple teams, I think they have it where like, or it used to be at least like the team could pay you money to be like, hey, I know you were only on our team for a year, but have be Throw wearing a mention. Yeah, be wearing our hat because you get a bust in the Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. So like, my question to you is, if you had like a bust in the WWE Hall of Fame, like, oh sure, There's what era? The, they what finally era? Build Jarrett, that physical Hall of Fame. Yeah, then, what era, Jarrett? Are Probably you, in like Tampa Bay, Florida. I think that's where you would put oh, a yeah. pro wrestling hall of fame Next if you needed to, uh, to put one. Hulk Hogan's Pasta Mania. Um, if I was going to pick an era, you you're know, putting, you're, is MMA Jarrett? You know the bust that you're Vince. What Vince wants is fluffy haired, light up hat, just like when sure. he's putting the most money into sure. him. Sure, but it's not what what Vince wants. I don't. Right yeah, now. I don't think that that's what fan. people think of him the most yeah. when they look back. And I think you got to do tears in his eyes, crying after Owen Hart died. Jeff Jarrett. Wow. And he, he, him and Deborah cut that promo. I didn't see this coming. Yeah, that's not in a million. That's years. when he's most relatable. He's uh, supposed to have the big tag team match or something. They were in a tag team at the time. Yeah, they were. He was the first person we got just like crying because, yeah. you know, a tragedy had just happened. And it was, you know, other than the desperation in his eyes that you saw in the footage of those yeah. Global Force wrestling tapes, mm -hmm. his last grasp at trying to do something in the business, I feel like that's when he was the most real. That's when I felt the most connected to him as a human. See, I, I want shooting glasses, uh, slap nuts, and carrying WCW, a guitar. WCW, yep. like WCW uh, early World 2000s, champ. like a WCW World black champ. and silver NWO, like 4.0 yep. era. Yeah, not him trying to connect with the fans and be real, but him just being like, well, I'm champ because I should be, right, I've guys? got all this stroke around yeah. here is what yeah. he was saying a lot. I like that. Yeah, so. Got all the stroke around. I think that's Agreed probably disagree, I guess. when he was in the eyes of the fans. Top of the game? Yeah, the most legitimate as a performer. He kinda, after that, you get the whole, I'm trying to push myself as the main guy and TNA shit. Nobody liked that. I'm going to say it. H is behind this mm -hmm. inducting Jared in because... H's whole like 2000 run. You think he just respects just a him? Was just a rip off of 2000 yeah. Jarrett. They had the same shit going on. Yeah, like 2000, time. 2008, she's coming back from the We'll talk quad about tear. 2003 when you got just like, yeah. uh, you know, Jarrett holding it down in TNA, yeah. winning every match by a screw job, keeping the title. You got Triple H winning every goddamn match by right. some side of lane. Like, there's some career parallels there. Yeah, well, H. H closely followed Jarrett when he left and went to WCW, mm -hmm. and he's like, here's a guy I fucking respect, you know? And, you, know? you know, H2 didn't really rise as a main eventer no. until he got Jarrett out of the way. That might have been Correct. a thing. Just like, yeah, uh, he knew, man. You know, until I get rid of this guy, hey, there's no way they're going with me. Hey, Vince, I heard Jeff wants to sign with uh, WCW. You should probably just let him. Interesting thoughts. A lot of politicking uh -huh. going on. Good guy, Jeff Jarrett. I wonder if the Hall of Fame ceremony is going to have another picture of Scott Steiner hung up at all the doors saying, don't allow this man into the building. I would assume. Oh, that's got to be building up to him eventually getting in. Oh, you can't keep the guy out forever. Don't forever, even, the Steiners are going to get in there. Don't talk to me about Hall of Fame ceremonies Steiners until Scotty Steiner's back in there. Oh, anywho, what do we got on the uh, very special this Devil's week, Trumpet rundown? This week, Devil's Trumpet presents... Stifler's rundown of World Championship Wrestling word. from January 23rd, 1988. Getting back away from those movie reviews. Dabbled in Hollywood a bit. Now we're... You Dipped know, our toe. Back in Richmond, Virginia. A place we feel a little bit more comfortable. Where you should be. Out there in that L.A. Jeez. First match, we got the Rock and Roll Express versus Tommy Angel and Cougar J. Yeah. Coolest names in wrestling. Rock and roll into that double drop kick. Second match, Sting. He's in there with a masked scrub named Gladiator Number One. 
not, I think there was probably not idea good. number two. No, there was. I don't think so. I know for a fact. This feels like a scam to me. No, I'm very familiar Stingwins with Stingwins of the Scorpion Deathlock. We got Warlord and Ivan Koloff. They're all part of uh, Paul Jones' army. They're in there against Mark Fleming and Bob Riddle. Koloff kind of drops an elbow off the top rope. The guy's stretched over the Warlord's shoulder, and yeah. then he just kind of flapjacks onto the mat. It was a cool little double team move for those yeah, guys. Bad. They got some... Nice little double team moves for not being regular tag team partners. Mm -mm. Speaking of tag team partners, the Sheep Herders. These guys know each with, other very well. With? With their flag boy, Johnny Ace. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, Got this flag going there. Uh, Luke, Luke, you want me to stand in this corner? I can't do a Johnny Ace. I don't know. He's got that stupid Super Dave voice. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, power to the people. Yeah, they're in there versus Larry Stevens and Trent Knight. Uh, Sheep Herders win after a double gut buster. Oh, yeah, off of the battery. Stan ring. Lane, one half of the Midnight Express. Sweet Stan. He's in there with Dick Murdoch. We're getting a lot of these weird tag teams. Yeah. We're like a guy with a regular tag team partner, teams with somebody else instead. Either way, they got Jim Cornette in their corner, and they're in there versus Andrew Bellamy and Stan Cruz. Correct. Murdoch gets the pin after one of those sloppy, delayed brain busters he does, yep. where he looks like he's just like a drunk idiot while he's doing it. Uh, uh, it that's was like, great. It's like when you get drunk at the bar, mm -hmm. and you're, you're like, oh, I'm going to roughhouse with this guy. Yeah. Yeah. We're having a good Check time. Check out how strong I yeah, am. Everybody oh, else is like, oh, oh I'm really like, uncomfortable yeah, picking right the beer now. bottles oh, up God. off the table. Oh, I wish you wouldn't chairs, be doing that. So you no, guys don't trip no, over them. I got this. That's exactly what it's like. Yeah. Uh, Arn Anderson, double A, the enforcer of the four horsemen. In there with jobber extraordinaire George South. How about jobber to the stars? Jobber to the stars, George yeah. South. Uh, another brain buster finish. I guess double this I called it a gourd buster. Because he drops them on their yeah, face. kind of goes face first instead of like back a little bit. But yeah. you're still just getting a guy up in a souple position and dropping him on his noggin. Yeah. Either way, this one looks much less sloppy. Arn Anderson wins. Ron Garvin, hands of stone. He was in there with Andrew Bellamy. But wait. Uh, I gotta tell you, uh, my roommate walked through the room while this was happening, and I talked to her for a minute, and I didn't pay attention how it ended, but I'm sure Ronnie Garvin won. How about the fact Probably that... with a punch. How about the fact that that wasn't Andrew Bellamy doing double duty? Uh, what, are, what are we talking here now? Is there a little bit of a... Okay, well, a Andrew, switch up going on Andrew here? Bellamy... Took oh, yeah, so loss. he was in there against Stan Cruz he earlier, took, so they just put this yeah. name up on the Chiron they did. twice. But now, the big difference this was a different guy. is Andrew Bellamy, mm -hmm. and we'll get to it, in more detail. Sure, sure. Is an African American gentleman. Uh huh. This guy was a honky. Right. Named Gene Ligon. Gene Ligon. How'd you yeah. get that name? Because Jim Ross immediately said okay, it. Okay, so he's correct. Because I was like, commentary. I was like, he, this guy's wrestling twice. This guy's white now? Okay, yeah, I didn't catch that. I was just going yeah. by what they put up on the screen. Yeah. It's silly me because WCW gets that wrong so often. He had a GL on his boots. Mm -hmm. Which was also a pretty good giveaway that his name was not Gaylord. It could have been that. Yeah. <laughs> but it wasn't Andrew Bellamy. Okay. So he lost anyways. Yeah. Okay, Garvin, Garvin stomped. That's not the main event. Garvin did that Garvin stomp it's, and then It sounds sat like on. that would be the main event probably yeah. of the show, but well, it, it turns be. out that's, they didn't because they put on another match. Ooh, big deal. But they have like a two minute. Barry well, Windham versus Tully Blanchard match. for the Western States Heritage Championship. Yeah, but clearly, like, it, they didn't show it all. They ran out of time. Oh, man, no. It ended in a big brawl. They went on for a they long time. They showed it all? They, there was a lot of stuff going oh, on. wow. It was great. Yeah. It, for once, they gave us a big match and didn't just end it in the middle of the match. Who won? Uh, you know, was, I'm going to call it a no contest. Nobody. I'm going to call it a no contest. Nobody won. Uh, the viewer won. Yeah, I guess so. We got a decent match. No finish, but, you know, whatever. It's TV. Let's get into this five count, our five okay. talking points, where we dig a little bit deeper into this show. The five count. What's your number one? WCW, or NWA, whatever you want to call Crockett it. Jim Crockett Promotions? Sure. You have too much shit going on. Hmm, I'm not so sure. That's the truth. You mm -hmm. have too much shit going on in what way well getting confused can't keep got, up with it too they, highbrow for you it's a little too fraser for me can you stop being a shrink and just be like a guy like a guy like a guy <laughs> screw her <laughs> what yeah you don't need her she's trash <laughs> yeah trash you're better off without her we both are I like the sound of this. Yeah, so do I. It's unattractive. Get liberating. Rather like the one and only time I wore a European bathing suit. They've got an hour and a half 
to cram this up. Well, two hours back then with commercials, blah, blah, sure. blah, uh-huh. to get it all in, right? And they're get those sponsors in. They're throwing in events that are happening tomorrow. They're throwing events that are happening at the end of the month. Mm-hmm. And they're talking about events that are going to happen the beginning of the following there month. There you go. But haphazardly and random and within the same promos. And God damn if it's not confusing. Because we're going to go to New Jersey and we're going to be in Long Island. And then we're going to be in New York. But no, we're going to be down in the south. And we're going to be in uh, the Carolinas. Chefs in the kitchen. Too many, irons Too many irons in, in the, the fire, fire brother. This is, um, They're yeah, talking... marketing 101 here. You, you get one thing that you're promoting Pick right thing, now. man. You promote the hell out of that until it happens, and then yeah. you start on the next thing after. You don't say we're doing X, Y, and Z and repeat that over and over again because that just confuses people. They keep talking about how the big bunkhouse brawl finals are tomorrow night. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. They're going to be tomorrow night on pay-per-view. On pay-per-view. you got to order that pay-per-view. And then at the same time, they're like, and that big bench press contest is coming up. But that's not at this. That's at a thing at the end of the month. I believe uh, we got a big thing going on in Charlotte, I think, uh, at the end of the month. I don't know, Tomorrow's man. The they're talking about that. And then at the very end of the show, what did they hype? Out of nowhere, man. Uh, you got to give me a second here to find it. Uh, I just wrote down hype got, in another got show. Flair coming oh, up t- with a big match against Hawk. I right. think that's at the Bunkhouse Finals. I think that's the Bunkhouse Finals. And then you have the Bunkhouse Finals. And then you have the Bench Press, which is coming up. There's a steel God cage fucking match knows. coming up. With the, no, a barbed the wire, barbed wire match, match coming up. Who's in that? That's uh, Nikita Koloff and Dick Murdoch. Okay, yeah. And Dick Murdoch, his main yeah. uh, storyline that we're getting right at the beginning of the show, we got a clip of that, is his... He's trying to collect that bounty on Dusty. Yeah. So he got he's doing a barbed wire match with Nikita. Yeah. They've, there's, they've, yeah. they've mentioned nothing about a possible buildup with Dusty and Dick I Murdoch. I think they're very confused right now. They've uh, this is kind of leads into part of my one A. I was yeah. or I was going to talk a little bit about uh right now they're starting to figure out pay per view and mm-hmm. they're starting to figure out TV, but they don't really know how they're going to do it because they still their houses are down in 1988. They're losing those house show things, so right now they're trying to build those back up. They're trying to give you as many big matches at the house shows as you can, but at the same time, they they can see that TV and pay-per-view is like the way it's going to, so like... But they're trying to just hype anything and everything at once. It doesn't work. With they're no doing too much. with discernible order. And uh, that first Rock and Roll Express match, if you watch it, Rock and Roll comes out. The crowd's always fucking electric, yeah. just molten when these guys come out. And this crowd barely cares. Like, they're getting cheered, but, like, only, like, a quarter of the people are yeah. standing. They're not nuts for it. And that tells me that uh, this is one of those marathon TV tapings, yeah. probably, where this, this is, is, like, like the third time hour come four out. of this. Yeah, these people have probably seen the Rock and yeah. Roll Express three or four times at this point. And I think this is a large part of why all their houses were decreasing in 1988, because... More and more, everything was TV tapings as they try to focus more on TV. And you just, instead of getting like a big house show thing with cool matches, you're just yeah. getting this endless shit with just squash match after squash match after squash yeah. match. And it's hard for anybody to care. It's hard for me to care. So, more yeah. than watching an hour and a half and of it, it. Yeah, you got, I, I put down that they're, they're mentioning the pay per view a lot, which yeah. seems to be the first sort of era where they're doing that. Tomorrow night on pay per view. Tomorrow night. So Tomorrow they're getting night. that going. But they're still worried they're about still those house shows. About the fucking they're still trying to sell press. tickets for those. Oh, I think the bench press actually is at the uh, Stampede. The no, they were like, no, it's going to be at the end of the month. I swear they said it There's was There's a like couple a things time. that are at that end of the month one. The, the barbed wire match is another one. I think it was in either They were promoting at oh, least barb- two, but the- I think three upcoming events at the same time and using the same show to do it. And it just, yeah, everything gets too unfocused. You can't promote that the, many things at once. The barbed wire match. Mm-hmm. God bless Jr. Oh yeah, he really put that. He's over. trying he's to put it over. And he's dangerous. Like, this barbed wire match is going to be brand new barbed wire, as we call it in Oklahoma. New barbed wire is called cat killing barbed wire. That's right. You get what get the shredded fuck up does that. that mean? People get caught up in barbed wire, animals, babies, anything. Dick Murdoch was talking it's about weird. it in that promo he cut. Man, he's out know, there. He's man. stretching out barbed wire all day long well, with his he truck. Works with cattle. That's what he does. He's got his. I know he's got his diesel Ford truck, mm-hmm. as he stated. Mm-hmm. And then you go all the way to the end of the show, 
after they've been talking about two different events the entire show, Mm -hmm. the very last thing they talk about is fucking Barry Windham and Lex Luger hyping up a tag match for a third show. Sure, yeah. That For got a set third up. show. That got set up. In the, that was where the third show came it's in. It's like, get the fuck out of here, man. So, yeah, I just wanted to talk about that as my oh, number one. This Houses are time. down because they're focusing too much on TV, but now they're getting worried about that, so they're trying to focus on houses again. And I mean, the wheels are coming off the car. They don't yeah. completely come off until 1989, but, uh, you know, we're getting there. We're starting to see why this company is going to be sold soon. They've, yep. they've been buying companies up to this point. Too many. They're in too many markets. They got playing to too many masters. Pretty it's, soon they're going to get bought. It's such a mess because like everybody comes out and they Yeehaw. cut these promos and they're just not that slick and they're just like, I got a problem with this guy, mm-hmm. but then I also got a problem with that guy. Yeah. And I know this guy also has a problem with that guy. And Sting but just came into the we've, company. We've got a problem. And he's feuding with Flair. I got a but problem. Flair doesn't seem right. to know it. Right, yeah. I tell you what. Flair's feuding with three other people right now. My number two, Mm -hmm. my number two, you just talked about the guy. If there's one guy that can almost make this mess work, it's Ric Flair. Oh, sure. Because he comes out for that promo. Part of his gimmick is just naming off people's names over and over again in a row. But but it works great because he does it all in order. So he's just used to it. He's used to it. He just addresses everything and it fucking works. And he's not just... A little bit of that I like. I like that everybody kind of mentions the world champ a little bit in their promos because, sure. like, they should be going. That should for be him. your focus. And yeah. the world champ should be like looking at two or three guys because he looking knows over that his shoulder all the time. Yeah. But still, then you you also do have to have one. You can have like one main feud everybody's focusing on, and then they spend like a second to mention something else. You can't have people feuding with yeah. two or three different people like equally right. at the same time. It's confusing as fuck. But I, I give it to Flair. He comes out, you know, he's got the uh, the new, the big belt. When did they switch to the big belt? Yeah, it had to have been around this time, actually. Because I feel like... That original beautiful one he has with, like, his name fully, yeah, like, uh, in gold at the bottom. The, and it's on that sort of... 20 pounds of dark, glory or yeah, whatever, Yeah, that dark right? leather strap, like, yeah. it's... The giant face looked plate. great. Looked great. That original old... version of that, and then they just kind of started making copies and copies and copies of it as the year went by, yeah. and you get like less and less detail every year. Yeah. By the time it was like a WWF title, it just kind of looked like a gold one turd. giant smooth like plate. Yeah. Here though, that thing's ornate. Oh yeah, it's ornate. It's beautiful. But he's got it slung over his shoulder. He's cutting into Looking Sting. Like a million bucks. Sting was just out talking shit about him, and so he he addresses it. Mm-hmm. He doesn't just glance over it. He's talking about how Sting's frustrated punk kid running around with yeah. teenagers and training bras. It's not so his he's, time yet. He's giving you, you know, he's giving you a backhanded Slow your roll, kiddo. Yeah, a little backhanded acknowledgement right there. While at the same time building up, yeah. uh, what a cocksmith he is. Right. He's you like throw a little yeah, bit of that. I'm gonna, yeah, you can't be first, but you can. Damn sure be next. Uh, so he moves on from Sting. But 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 there's a little caveat there. What? You could probably be next, but there's another thing that I hear. He had a pretty steadfast rule. No hair, no flair. Oh, yeah. Don't be shaving that bush, ladies, or he's yeah. going to kick you out of his that, room at the Marriott. That goes, what do you think he's talking about when he means teeny boppers and the tranny bros? No hair, no flair. Yeah. Putting it out there, all you girls eyeballing me. You know, big podcast star. I see you out there in public. I'm with Flair. Yeah, that's a ooh, tried and true rule of yours. Ugh, I've seen you send him away. Throw you out of here so goddamn seen fast. Seen you send him away at the bar. Hey, honey, let me get a peek down there. Nope. I pull down those britches and I find yep. a razor rash instead oh. of a big lush forest. Only on Give me a, a break. Only on a Wednesday at uh. Living Dead Girls. Oh, yeah. This should be another sponsor. Razor uh, Rash Wednesdays. We also have a gentleman's club that That's we're right. putting together. Uh, we're getting it off the ground soon. Correct. Living Dead Girls. Uh, it's a goth trailer trash themed strip I'll club. I'll turn a girl. Yeah. I'll turn There's going to be a lot of C-section scars and lower back tattoos. Yeah. It's, uh, let's put it that way. Imagine, uh, what was that? Suicide Girls? Uh, that website with yeah. all the like, uh, sad yeah. girls yeah. getting Imagine- naked for... Too little money? Imagine Suicide Girls, but with the sleaze of Backpage. Mm, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, I think that's... That that's, sounds great. Yeah, uh, it's real nice. <sighs> right, you gotta cut all that out. Yeah, that's a good idea. Just bleep it. Just okay, number two, on my side, I just want to talk for a minute about that Road Warriors promo. Because I was talking about how the Rock and Roll Express came out, and people weren't really giving them a luke... Or they gave them a bit of a lukewarm reaction. Yeah. I've never seen the Rock and Roll get such... These road warriors, I gotta say, this is the most subdued I've ever seen them. When did they in an come interview? Out? Uh, they cut a promo. Either way, 
Road Warrior uh, Animal had his eyes closed the entire time. Mm -hmm. This dude was fucking chiefed as hell. It was after the Sheep Herders match. Hawk is just completely subdued. When it gets cut to him, he's like not even hollering. He's kind of... So I'm thinking like either this is really just like hour nine on it or these guys were chiefing it up hardcore backstage. Like... This seemed like a show. I don't know. It seemed everybody was just off their Phoning game a little in. bit. Like nobody really cared. Hawks and just. I was just so shocked to see a Road Warriors promo. Where I was like, these guys are like talking at conversational levels, and yeah. they're not even animated. Like Hawks' big talking point was Flair. The difference between you and I is, if I make a bet and I lose it, mm-hmm. I'm not paying. <laughs> It's like, well, you're just a poor sport then, man. Yeah, to be fair, though, I don't think Flair's really paid too oh, many debts. Oh, no. <laughs> I know a little bit about Flair's personal life. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he's got some outstanding debts out there. Yeah, search, uh, just put it in your Bing box, Ric Flair financial problems, oh, 2000s. Yeah, sure. I mean, you might oh. overload Bing, all the, oh, all the hits you're going to get back on that one. Nah, that's probably not true. You can't overload Bing. Didn't, they're, they're very high quality. Uh, didn't he? He was like, there. he was in WWE like out of shape and dying just because he needed money again and i think he, he had was a, in australia 60 pounds overweight and bleeding like a stuck yeah, pig against 80 year old yeah. hulk hogan because he was out of work right, and needed money he had like one of those moments where it was like he needed money and like wwe was like uh, okay man like i guess mm-hmm. and he had some like angle with edge he was doing a program with edge and uh he got in like a car accident and then like the person was I like, oh, shit, this are all. you Ric Flair? And he's like, yeah, I'm Ric Flair. Please don't sue me. Mm-hmm. And I think like Edge cut like a vignette where he's like driving down the oh, highway yeah. in a robe. Just his drunk, crazy yeah. flair. And like that, hitting people that, and then yeah, that memory putting people in the figure four leg lock. <laughs> well, that's hilarious. Yeah, that's a that's I'm going to have to bing that one. Yeah, that's going to be nice. Um, look up that one on Bing too. Look forward to that on the Twitters this week, folks. Yeah, for that sure. That could that could be a match of the week. Uh, what do we got? You got like a number three? Oh, road We're moving on to a number in. three. Oh, right, immediately after that, Sweet Stan Lane and Dickie Murdoch. Dickie Murdoch. I want to talk about this one too. I was so mad at first because I was like, "What the fuck are they doing? Like this just this this show's all over mm-hmm, the place. Mm-hmm. Like why why are these two tagging?" And then I saw them tag. Oh, it's a beautiful God, just like contrast damn. and styles that are it is the greatest man sweet and salty like it is uh, who it's it's why i like to have dudes bigger than me around me when i'm running my mouth sure like sweet stands in there just like throwing badass kicks just and looking then, pretty and yeah doing karate and like doing little like jigs and like sonnery moves mm-hmm. like hey, look at me ladies love me check me out and then i'll just like throw the dude to the outside and be like murdoch hey murdoch why don't you hit this guy with a Wear chair him out and Murdoch's just like bah! spitting and is, yelling. It's and like the third or fourth Dick Murdoch match we've got in this 1988 WCW, and I still have not figured out why he can just wear people out with chairs every match, and I it's don't not know, a disqualification. He does. He does. He's the, never been disqualified, not he, once yet. He hits. Uh, who did he hit? I think he had Stan Cruz out there first. He hits him uh, in the back of the head. Yeah, with, with the spine Real of the hard. chair. Yeah, just the end of the chair. Just the, it was like where like yeah. the skull and the neck connect. He <laughs> just like thumps him with it, and then starts choking him with the cord. And like sweet stands, just it. like yep, keep it up, friend. You're doing a great job. Meanwhile, Jr. and Tony are just like scrambling away from that yeah. table. Just like oh god, here this he goes. This guy's fucking insane. Oh, I almost buried the lead. The best part of the match. Jim Cornette on a commentary, standing no, oh, no. over JR's shoulder. No, we'll get to that. Okay. The best part, Captain Redneck mm-hmm. coming out to that Midnight Express music. <laughs> that, the, not even ripoff, but whatever replacement the WWE <laughs> Network is, is on there, yeah. <laughs> Still got like sort of that uh, late 80s Spaceman like, vibe. Yeah, and synth, housey, whatever. And definitely just, like, not what they're playing on the jukeboxes and redneck. the old honky-tonks that Captain Redneck's oh, going to the after ones the that, matches. Uh, Cornette's pulling them out of? Well, Cornette's mother is oh, uh, old Mama true. Cornette's. Yeah. $274 at the Squirrel Tooth Saloon. Give me a break. That was a good bit. I'm just really, yeah, I'm loving Cornette just getting over on guest commentary. Not really just like sitting at a professional table like they do these days, but just standing over JR's shoulder 
And I just kind of remember, and I've seen these guys call some shows together, just how great Cornette is at getting under JR's skin and yeah. needling him. Oh, yeah. And how much better JR is as a commentator when he's got somebody needling him and yeah. riling him up and like calling him out on stuff and trying to confuse him. And he gets all frustrated and just starts getting pissed. And then, yeah, I love salty JR. That's my favorite JR. And we got some of that here. You're on the live wire. Good morning. Hello. You're on live wire. Uh. Um, Jim Ross. Yeah? Um, I followed you through, uh, oh, WCW. Yeah. i like to say that Goldust will beat Hunter for the belt. Mm-hmm. And, um... I'm enough, enough. enough. Yeah. Next. Bless his heart. Next. Bless his little heart. He got nervous. Well, uh, you're on live wire. Good morning. Hi, how you doing? Good. What's your question or comment? Um, I com- You were talking about, um, Goldust being... Or somebody being the um, champion that wasn't Hunter. Oh, go to the next one. I don't know. We don't have time. Well, I'm so open for them. Going to be on the, if you're going to be Jeez. on this program, you got to think a little bit. you got to be prepared. We're not playing calls here, folks. You're either going to get on or you're going to get off. And we're not going to waste any time here. You're no on pressure. live wire. Here no go. pressure. Cornette's loudmouth, fast-talking, just a rich boy, mama's boy character. That's everything that JR hates. So, everything that he hates. I promised we'd get to it, so I'm going to get to it. Murdoch's doing the beatdowns on everybody. He beats up Stan Crew or what's his name? Doesn't matter. He's somebody. Yeah. He's, and uh he's in there. Then he gets a hold of the yeah, Andrew. Stan Cruz, that's a guy. Yeah. We got and two stands in that match. Two stands. Match. That's why it was a little confusing. A little confusing. So then he gets his hands on old Andrew Bellamy. Mm-hmm. Who he ends up hitting the brain buster on. Yeah. And he's big old sloppy brain buster. Mr. Mr. Uh Bellamy is an African American gentleman. And Captain Rednecks beating him up. And uh, Jim Ross, or not Jim Ross, Cornette, mm-hmm. he's like, hey, you know, you, you look at this, he has, he, this guy, he's, look at this Ralph Bellamy here. It's like, okay. Look at this Ralph just, Bellamy here. Yeah, he's just burying God him. damn. He's like, it's Ralph Bellamy, that's clearly not his name, whatever. Mm-hmm. And he's like, Captain Redneck, he beats you up so bad, you don't know where you are. Like, like Ralph Ralph over here, you know, look, look at Ralph. Uh, I'll tell you what, what do you get when you cross Ralph Bellamy with a groundhog? Six more weeks of basketball, brother. Wow. That's crazy! That's the next word I had written down after that. Matt, that's racist. Wow. That's the racist thing we've heard. Yeah, that might be the... uh, Jim Cornette, God bless (sighs) you. He's doing a lot to, you know, push a progressive agenda these days. Back then, he was a heel, baby. Nah, I'm pretty sure he was just racist. Nah, nah. All right, all right. He's... Agree to disagree. It was the 80s. Everybody was racist. But, you know, I feel like Jim Cornette, he's evolved over time. Uh, My number four, just want it for a minute. Talk about how smooth Arn Anderson is in the ring. How great everything he does looks. And how I think you'd factor in just the fact that he cuts such a great, serious, fired up promo. I think he's probably the best wrestler of all time. Uh, This match, goddamn, just a jobber match. But he's just all these little things that I appreciate. He, like, isolates this guy's arm. He doesn't just drop a knee on it. He drops a knee on it, and then he grinds his knee in Mm -hmm. it in a couple seconds. He's just doing a little extra thing every time to make everything he does look so much meaner and so much more awesome. And I'm just thinking about what a goddamn shame it is. Right now, they got him and Tully especially, and Flair and whatnot, and they're just such huge parts of just the upper card of this company, and all these shows are built around them so much. They're like, there's three of them. One of them's a singles wrestler. The Uh other two are a tag team. But they're still like somehow in like three or four of the top programs. Yeah, they could all just at be every that show. main eventer at no problem. And then like this company is so fallen apart and so confused that like not too long from now, they just get pissed off because they're not getting paid like main eventers. So then they go to the WWF and you're thinking like, oh man, two of the, like the top heels in the fucking other company, these big main eventers, great guys that can do everything, they're coming in. This is going to be like a huge sort of like, should have been like a Hall and Nash in the late 90s jumping over yeah. type situation. But nah, instead they just kind of get stuck in a tag team and they did fine. They put the titles on them, but like, you know, they had Heenan doing all their talking for them. They didn't talk much. They weren't a huge focal point of the company whatsoever when they yeah. were up north. And it's just like, feels like such a goddamn shame. Like at yeah. this point, like, I don't know, Arn and Tully should have been getting way more recognition 
Way more money for sure. I'm on yeah. your side there, Tully. I know you're a little salty about that and always well, have been. A lot of it went up his nose. Yeah, these guys should just be like respected as the greatest fucking heels, the greatest wrestlers ever because they just continually killed it throughout the entire 80s, week after week after week. Yeah, there was good. And their dudes. careers both just fucking fizzled out instead of just like ending in great ways. No world title runs, no like. You know, well, there are plenty of memorable feuds, but Whoa. Spotlight was never on these guys the way it should have been. So, yeah, my number four is just shouting out Arn Anderson. I do it a lot, but, you know, it bears repeating. Yeah, he's a good dude. I'm going to, my four is going to go to another guy who's a good guy. Who? Good old JR. Uh, Jim Ross. Yeah. Mm, just a, you know, rosy cheeked boy from Oklahoma made good. He, uh, he did something no one's ever done. Oh, wow. Breaking new ground. Uh, there was a match that you had a conversation during, rightfully okay. so. Oh, yeah. They, uh, Ronnie they Garvin. Ronnie, I couldn't believe how unprofessional of me not to uh, pause that Ronnie Hands Garvin stone, match man. and just you know watch every sec, pour over every second of that match. Uh, I former, don't know. Former NWA world champion. I think I might have been making a fun of a line. I think somebody said Ronnie Garvin wrote the book on something, and I just wrote down, Ronnie Garvin wrote the book on boring. <laughs> there you go. Huh? Get it? Funny. It's pretty funny. Yeah. But JR starts in the middle of the match as I'm drifting in and out of attention. It's like, uh, this, this is Ronnie Garvin, I tell you, you know, you see him at the hotel, and he's always thinking about his matches, and, you know, you get about an hour, two hours out to showtime, and he starts getting antsy, and he's moving all around the, the lobby, and he can't sit still, and he's, he's looking to fight. He's looking to fight. He takes this serious. Yeah. And it's like... Whoa, here's somebody trying to give insight a little bit to of, Ronnie fucking Garvin. A little bit Garvin. of character work. Hey, okay, Ronnie comes out here and As he opposed to fucking... Has the same stiff-ass yeah. robotic match every time. But Instead of Davy Crockett being like, oh, he, he's, he's tough. <sighs> he's, he could punch you. He's ho, tough. Ho. Ho. Not slam. Yeah. JR's like, I'm going to give... Yeah. Like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was probably that's when like a, the garbage that would have been his call when the garbage stop yeah. was happening. But like clearly, this dude's nothing but just a meathead prick of a human being. Fucking Jim Ross is out there polishing turds, yeah. trying to give this guy he's some like, nuance. No, 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 he's not a dick. He's just super focused. Like dude's intense. He, like you know, he fucking takes a couple hours before every show, and he you know yeah. gets jacked up. Just like how you didn't want uh, Kenny Shamrock to enter that zone. Oh, no, he'd get in that zone, and then there was no stopping him. Same thing with Ronnie. So, JR, consummate professional. Mm, Except for, you know, when he let Flair get drunk at that video game interview or whatever. And then he had to be fired. And then he had to be fired. I don't think that's... Is that his fault? Uh, Number five, we're probably just going to talk about that main event match, because... I mean, we haven't addressed it, and it was a lot the of fun. Booze bags. It was a lot of fun. It was. Uh, these guys at the top of their game right now: Tully Blanchard, Barry Windham, especially. Probably you can make a case that Barry Windham's the best guy in wrestling at this point in 1988. That's fair. He seems poised to just you know have a big run, be that big main eventer. If he was in that spot, they got Luger in right now, being like the next anointed guy, yeah. like. Going against Flair, like I really People think it would have worked out a lot better, and uh, you could have had him beat Flair and run with the title for a little bit, and people would have liked it. But uh, these guys, just you know, classic fucking Southern wrestling right here. You got a heel just aggressively attacking a body part. Mm-hmm. You got a good guy just passionately fighting from underneath, trying mm-hmm. to come back, trying to come back, even though he's hurt. Textbook shit in the crowd, who like up to this point just looked like fucking exhausted, like they could barely stand to be there. They're molten again. They're yeah, fucking they're f- insane. They're Finally super happy to into see it. Wrestling. Uh, cutting away from the match every once in a while to hear Lex Luger talk yep. was a really bad idea. It started off okay, <laughs> and it goes into our Lex Luger sure, sure. thoughts. It's, at first, when I like, thought they were going to talk to him once, it yeah. was a little weird. They're doing it during a match. It was like, okay, was like, whatever. Okay. He didn't you know, do anything bad. Keep him in people's mind because he's part of this storyline here. And then, like, they shot, they show him again, and it was like, well, it's okay. He's you know just watching the match intently. Oh, man, you start getting down to that the wire and when these guys show, are really building then something. They and show people him are interested that in the third match. time and he starts gonna, saying names wrong. You're and gonna he's cut just, away to him again. During the best parts of the match, you got Brian Wynn, Bear Bear. Bear wing, bear wing jam. Yeah, either way. They built this match up great. They were talking about it all through like the episode, making it seem like, hey, you're going to see a real match. These guys came out and beat the shit out of each other. It started off with just stiff shit. 
Then you get the big spot, the turning point in the match where Tully cheats and hits his leg with that chair. And man, it was awesome after he got hit, his, his knee walloped with that chair. I'm sorry, did he cheat? Well, you know, if well, you ref, ain't cheating, you ain't trying. Ref, ref wasn't paying attention. It, did That's, he? It's kind of his fault. It's kind of on Tommy okay. Young. But man, after Wyndham got that shot to his knee... He sold the shit out of that. I was loving it. You never see a good guy yeah. selling a thing like this, just begging and crying. Like, you yeah. know, good guys are always trying to look too cool, too stoic. Like, right before this guy just sounded like a hollering old woman, just like right before they go to a commercial break. Mm-hmm. There's a bit. Uh, Wyndham's trying to get back into the ring on that bad knee. Oh, he's hobbling, and he's like at the apron. Oh, he's, hobbling. he's grabbing the bottom rope and. Tully comes over and just starts kicking him in the face. Sure, like you ain't getting back in the ring, uh-huh. fella. Like, it's not happening. And Wyndham does this thing. He, like, takes two steps back, and he does this, like, I'm going to fall over because I can't keep keep my Mm -hmm. own weight up, but I'm also going to, like, throw up because the pain's so bad. (laughs) If he would have thrown up, it would have been next level. just like, and then just falls over as they go to commercial. throwing up is the only thing that could have made this match a Uh, step above. Absolutely. Real quick, going back to your boy Lex Luger Uh and his little promos, he did give me a goal for this summer. Oh, okay. Wow. Summertime I, goals. I want to get just ripped to shit. Sounds great. And then wear pastel polos with the collar up. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. You went on that? Yeah, just roll around like 1980s high school movie villains. Yep. Sounds just great. Those acid wash jeans he had. Ugh. He was looking great. So the big ending of this match. Oh, coming back from that commercial uh-huh. break because he's down on the ground. Uh huh. Nice little touch I liked was uh, they throw back to the title card. Okay, of yeah. If we were watching, you know, Barry versus Let Tully. You know, this is a big fucking for, title match. For the, the, you know, very prestigious Western States Heritage Championship. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Again, WCW, you have too much shit going on. Well, they bought that big uh, Texas company, Yeah, but man. it's, it's no. like when WWF had, like... They had big plans. Big they had plans. the hardcore champion, the intercontinental champion. Oh, are we talking about the European time champion? when the WWF had too many titles? Yeah, you know, I don't rem- I don't remember when that was. Either way bad uh but they come I back loved the big finish of this match though you're getting you're they set it up there's enough time in the episode left you're getting close enough to a half an hour where you can swear this is just going to be a 30 minute time limit draw yeah you swear it's going to happen well first of all i didn't think they'd deliver like the last time mm-hmm. when, oh I was yeah like, they're gonna run the out of time be over because jr God bless him, hyping the match the entire show. Like, you're going to want to see this, folks. Like, mm-hmm. stick around. This is the thing you're going to watch. And it's like, well, that's a nice touch, but God bless you, JR. There's going to be like five minutes they left when this match Give us the whole starts. match. We get down to the wire. Yeah. Fucking Wyndham finally makes his big comeback. He's got Tully covered. The ref's about to count. Boom, the bell rings. And that's when the shoe drops. You're like, ah, ah there it is. There what it is. I was expecting. Ran out of time. Time limit draw. But no, it turns out the match is still going. There wasn't a time limit draw. We're at 28 minutes in, and uh, old... What happened? Old J.J. Dillon, the horseman manager, he took it upon himself to trick Barry Wyndham, that, ring that bell, that make dirty him old think dish time rag. is up. So instead of pinning the man, Wyndham gets up like a dum-dum when he's looking up like an idiot. This is a great heel trick. Hell yeah. Real great stuff, but uh, and then they kind of ruin it when they do this thing where they're having everybody watch the instant replay to like explain to the referee like what happened, and it takes them like five minutes to show all the footage again. I hate, I hate that because like they still do that in wrestling today. But, like, they'll be, like, every once in a while you're going to watch the instant replay. Mm-hmm. And then, like, the 30 other times. Yeah, but there's no established, like, yeah, like oh, you can so watch an instant replay. You, and when don't What's you? the instant replay rule in wrestling? But then you also... Why can Dick Murdoch hit people with chairs and nobody else can? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I'm okay with that rule. <laughs> Captain Redneck's rules yeah. is a little like thing like before Raven's yeah. rules. He just, they just never told us yeah. he had his own contract. You want to be the guy that tells him he can't do it? I, you send David Crockett over to explain it to oh, him. Gee, oh, oh, poor oh, I sure, yeah. oh, sure hate to get under your skin oh, here, Murdoch, oh, but uh, yeah. I was talking to Dusty and you can't, you can't be doing that. But like you said, they go for that replay thing, mm-hmm. which is fine, but they backed it up to like five minutes. And so you had to watch them watch wrestling yeah. for five and minutes. And it just took everything from like a great fucking thing where I was like, this is awesome Fever to pitch, just man. boom, just crowds on, hot, stops on a dime. Like, kill. like what you do is this, you, you have JJ ring the bell. 
Uh, everybody stands up confused. The ref goes to look at the timekeeper. Everybody's shaking their head. No, no. Wyndham gets up. He's shrugging his shoulders, asking people what's going on, what's going on. And then you have Tully roll him up and pin him. Yeah. And then, then, you know, it protects Wyndham. He doesn't look like a great, like a huge moron because yeah. it was a great trick. It makes Tully look good because he's conniving and he stole a win. Yeah, but you can't take that prestigious Western States Heritage Championship title off a of Wyndham. Oh, that's true. That thing's going to stick title match, for a long brother. time and they were going to be talking about it a long time. People always... I think that would have helped too with this big storyline they're building where, you know, you get Luger, the horsemen come out and they start beating uh, on Luger because Luger runs out like an idiot in the middle of it. So like... You I'm got so a big, mad. Die, beat and this else. is, you know, this is step two in this Barry Windham storyline. Step one was last time we watched it. Flair said in the interview, "Hey Barry Windham, we got our eye on you. We mm-hmm. want you to join the Horsemen." This is step two. They're holding Luger, and they give Windham the option. They say, "Hey, hey Windham, fucking join us. Hit this guy." And Windham's like, "No way. I ain't gonna do it." So he starts fighting Flair. I think if you have him take a pin here, yeah. that helps out that storyline. It helps that frustration to him. Where, ah, I keep trying to do it the right way, yeah. but you know these guys got it figured out. They're yeah. they're stealing wins from me. You, you know, got it. I'm friends with this idiot Luger who you keeps wanna, ruining my matches and getting me be in a bad. Winner. Join some winners. Yeah, I think that would have. I think we really let you win. Given Tully that pin here would have not hurt anybody. Would have moved this storyline on. Yeah, but you can't. And it wouldn't lose have gave that. us that fucking five minutes of making everybody watch a goddamn you can't monitor. Lose that Western States Heritage Championship. Sorry, I have to keep scrolling up <laughs> to see what it's called because I don't remember. Hey, yeah, there's. I tell you what, when it, Flair was like, "Come on, hit Lex," mm-hmm. and he's like, "No, I can't. I'm a good guy." Mm-hmm. There's one guy that would have hit Lex. Who is it? old flannel shirt guy that jumped out of the stands and into the ring. Well, it was, it was, it was, I, was, I was actually, it's amazing how much this match worked because even though, like I said, it got ground to a halt by that big everybody standing around watching them. Once they all were yeah. jumping on Luger, this crowd was still insane. Like insane. They had to cut the crowd mic because they were screaming it was so, so loud, loud once they started triple teaming Luger. They started, there was just a, just a sousance mm-hmm. of my favorite thing in the world. Sure. Throwing garbage. Oh, yeah. I didn't know if you saw a oh, cup or something bounce across sense. the ring. Actually, this whole crowd, now that you mention gonna... it, looked like a flannel bomb went off in there. Oh, like Every single th- goddamn person was just a you know, grizzled working man we dressed in flannel. talked about it. Go if you don't watch the show, that's fine. I don't blame you in the least bit. But watch the first five minutes of the show because they give you like fifty different crowd shots where they're just like, "Look at all the people here coming to support our great product," and it's all, all just, like, just got off of work oh, five minutes God. ago. I watched uh, the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre mm-hmm. last night. Oh yeah, that's and, a like, great one. I was old wa- puffy nips in that movie. I, oh just boy, got those you puffy ain't nips going you the ain't whole kidding. fucking. I'm watching I'm this. Watch that tonight. I'm watching this episode, and like I can't. Re- I'm getting like lost. I, am I watching Texas Chainsaw? Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. This is uh, this is WC. Yeah, that's not the Sawyer's yeah, is, sitting yeah, front no, row. That's just the not, entire is, Southern professional wrestling Richmond. audience. This is the Richmond Coliseum. <sighs> but we got Richmond, that Virginia. We got that fan running dog. Bunch of tobacco farmers. Yeah, that guy was wanted to help his boy Luger. Did you see what happened to him? Uh, I didn't. I caught the um, announcers talking about it, but in the oh. chaos, I missed exactly what was I happening. I went back to watch it carefully, all mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. So he, he, he gets into the ring, and as soon as he hits the ring, and he like crosses the threshold of the ropes, yeah. he surveys the land of all those wrestlers. Who am I taking my shot at? And he hesitates for 15 seconds in like a... Oh, fuck, what did I just get myself yeah. into? At which point, Arn Anderson runs up and kicks him in the neck as hard as he can, <laughs> right? Oh, double A. He's the so, enforcer. So then, double A proceeds to choke him with both hands uh-huh. until he chokes him all the just way down to the mat. Ring his neck. <laughs> so that's when I said, hey, Kramer, dude, you ever kill a man before? And he said... What do you think, Junior? These hands have been soaking in ivory liquid. And then when he's got him down on the mat, he grabs the back of the guy's hair and kicks him again in the neck. Uh, I'm going to go back and watch that but little moment. Just just watch that. That's that solidifying whole... it. I'm saying it right now. Any other list I've made in the past is moot. Arn Anderson's my favorite wrestler of yeah. all time. 
The best part is the whole time Arn Anderson's doing all this, JJ follows over like the oh, like he's... annoying little I dog catch, in the fight. I did catch the end there where JJ was JJ's giving just some throwing rabbit, rabbit kicks, kicks yeah, those, at this guy, those like little kicking his kicks. ribs. Got to get your shots oh. in. Yeah, that's that's when I was able to track like where where they were in the chaos. It was great. It was beautiful great. thing. Uh, hot finished. It could have been a little bit hotter, maybe if uh, you know they mm. would have taken our expert advice, but still a pretty good match. Uh, pretty hot finish, and this was all in all a pretty damn decent episode of world championship wrestling it's because they got out of that stupid studio oh it makes the world a difference oh, it sure so makes a world difference. a difference oh one quick little thing with the fans mm-hmm. so after that hot little thing they do the stupid little interview with lex and windham and they're like well, i'll be your tag uh, partner they love each other so in much an event so far from now they were hugging they were hugging holding hands they, for way too long they would never turn on each yeah. other they are solidified in this upcoming tag match as lex said eight times they while talking solid to unit. barry windham Wyndham knows in his heart. <laughs> Wyndham knows in his heart. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that was about. It was that beating, loving heart of Barry Wyndham that is never going to turn black, and he will never become never, a member of ever. the Four Horsemen. So after that goes way too long, they throw back to Shivani and JR. Tony Skiavone. And it's like, everything's been said. Just end the show. Yeah. But they're still like, nah, we're going to let them. End it on a hot note. They're going to talk about the pay-per-view some more. So they're talking, they're talking, they're both facing camera, and you can see, you know, they're against that that railing there mm-hmm. where the fans are. You see this black dude just coming up. He's about five, ten feet Ooh, back. He's got an idea. And he's running up towards the two of them, and he's got his Polaroid camera in, in his hand, right? Mm-hmm. And JR and Shivani are talking to each other. Old boy just full on taps Shivani's shoulder from behind like uh-huh. a, excuse me buddy yeah. turn around so I can take this picture s- stop uh, your broadcast here yeah. I got some shit going and on and Shivani pro's pro no sells no him. him yeah mm. but uh, he, he fired that picture off anyways and it blinds the camera and pretty good it's just a pretty nice good. little moment so way to not have security yeah Jim Crockett at all guy gets in the ring well you know people are taking pictures 1980s wrestling if there's one thing we've learned it's you win some you lose some you lose a lot of promotional it. consideration paid for by the following. Say you're getting tired of lettuce and tomato hamburgers in this town that don't quite make it. Yeah! You say that just once you'd like your hamburger hot and your lettuce and tomato cool and crisp all at the same time. Yeah! Well, I say you got it. I'm talking McDonald's new lettuce and tomato hamburger, the McDLT. I'm talking quarter pound of beef on the hot, hot side. And the hot stays hot. The new McDLT. with what did you do with that intro there thank you uh okay so we had some technical difficulties we're in a flood state here yeah uh, we got a lot of we lost some power right when we were trying to sign off there and get to the end of our five count uh but you know maybe we're just gonna jump back into it and uh just see how we can piece all this shit together and there's you know wcw problems you win some you lose some as we were saying you lose them all you we're not going to lose most of them. I think our batting average is pretty okay. That's pretty decent. <laughs> pretty decent, okay. We kind of got like a journeyman's lifetime average, like 270. Yeah. You're not uh-huh. winning a batting title, sure. but you're not going to lose a game for anybody either. Other baseball metaphors as well. Yeah, you're yeah. showing up. You know, you're serviceable. Maybe somebody trades for you. You're a crafty veteran. It's, uh, you know, you're getting down to the playoffs, and it's like, Hey, this guy plays a pretty good third base. Yeah, let's, I'm like a, let's bring him in. I'm like a Tom Berenger in Major League. Like, a, Oh, yeah, there you know. go. Uh, Jake. Jake. Uh, uh, yeah. 
Jake what? So I'm a little <sighs> bit towards the end of my run, but like if I just enough uh, old icy hot on the knees, I think I can still yeah. knock out a couple seasons in the majors. Yeah. I'm a wily veteran. I got some Hell tricks yeah. up my sleeve. You still got it. Uh, you know, have the pure youth and ability of a Willie Mays Hayes or a Joe Boo, but I, I feel like mm. my experience is worth something. You know what I'm saying? Jesus Christ. He's a good man. You know, help me hit curveball. No, that's true. Uh, we needed a three count. Yeah. I brainstormed. You did? We've had this one in our pocket for a while. Sure. We started things off talking about our favorite wrestlers. Mm-hmm. All the way back in episode number one or two. Oh, in the way, way back I think back that's what we machine. called them. So we've been saving this one. We've we're gone gonna platinum seven go times to this now. since then. Eh, we're not going to talk about singles wrestlers, but we're still going to talk about our favorite wrestlers. We're going to talk about our favorite tag teams. It's appropriate for this episode because it was like all tag team matches instead of that main event. I was thinking a lot about tag teams. I'm like, who were my favorite tag teams in the 1980s when I was but a wee lad? Yeah, those are a few of my favorite teams. Yeah, that's right, because... When you're a little kid, the things that are your favorite aren't the same as like a normal person's favorite because little kids are idiots. When a dog barks, when the bee stings. Like a uh, B. Brian Blair or Jumping Jim when Brunzel. When I'm feeling sad. So, when you were a dumb little kid, who was, uh, who was one of your favorite tag teams? Alrighty. Number three. Number three. Not that there's really any order to this shit. Oh, you just gotta order them. But number three, because without order, what are we? Animals. As a young Dogs man, bees. I grew up the middle of three boys. Mm-hmm. Well-established uh, off-air characters. Yep, yep. Uh, Davey R. Scheister and Teddy Bizkliz. And they were both formative in my wrestling days as a child. How so? Well, we just watched it together. We all discovered it together, you know, and stuck with us Mm -hmm. more than others. But, you know, Ted's come around, you know, he's back in the product. Dave and I never really left the fold. But, uh, you know, my problem with Dave was he liked uh, Hogan and uh, The Taker. Ugh. Yeah, get over yourself, right? I was was an Ultimate Ultimate Warrior Warrior fan. Right? He was the good guy. like Sting, because their faces were painted. But a long, your head tassels. a long standing thing that I grew up in was I was always the bad guy, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Ted was older. Okay. So he had the G.I. Joes. I had the Cobras. He's more of the tragic villain, I feel like. He's like, as it turned out to the be, the Batman villain who yeah. like falls into a pit of acid yeah. or is like horribly disfigured in right. some way and then yeah. it turns into a twisted monster. Yeah, correct. You're more of like, I think, like the calculating, just like inherently evil from the beginning. Yes, thank sort you. Sort of like Lex Luthor type villain. That might be the nicest thing you've ever said to me or about me. Ted, so thank you. Ted might be Two Face and yeah. you're Lex Luthor. <laughs> <laughs> There's that bit of uh, humanity left in him. Like, uh, if only you he didn't get mean to turn to out that he's way. Too too scarred. Yeah, You'll never just, uh, fully get through to these him. These scars, man. These scars. And Dave is uh, the mark from Home Improvement of your <laughs> trilogy. <laughs> huh. he's, uh, he's still just not breaking out of I'm that Home gonna, Improvement. I'm metaphor. not going to be able to get through this. <laughs> Just going to be thinking of him as that. So I've always loved the bad guys. And uh, that brings me to... This first team right here. Mm-hmm. I was a little too young. Bad, 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 bad boys. Make, make me feel so good. I got to play at the bar again. Remind me. Oh, yeah. That's a great bad one. Bad boys. Uh, this Get in trouble. One of the gentlemen here had a fine singles run who we've been covering oh, lately. Good for him. But I was a little too young to remember that. But right here is like my bread and butter of what I can remember. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about Money, Inc. Oh, wow. A little DBIC and IRS. Just uh, the rich man and the tax man. Yeah. They, they, I knew from an early age, they had money. Mm-hmm. I wanted that money. Oh, sure. They're always flaunting in people's faces. Oh, if only I could get that money. Yeah. Look at them. I'd have everybody doing whatever, just like they're doing. Oh, you fucking Erwin R. Scheister's got all those papers in his briefcase. I bet those are very important papers. Yeah, I didn't care for him, but I could make Dave be that one day, you oh, know? Oh, yeah, sure. He did I could be the guy with the money. The tax man. Right. And you sort of were just the guy who wears sequined suit jackets yeah, everywhere. Yeah, I just don't have the money, but if I get that money... And then Ted's Virgil. Yeah, and then I'm like, I'm like, Dave, your IRS, your job... 
is to make sure mm-hmm. I have money. Yeah. That's your job. I'm going to do all my creative endeavors, yeah. you know, because yeah, I'm thing. gifted. Yeah. And then you just keep the books balanced. I got, I got a sweet beard and blonde hair and, you know, some sequin coats. That's a lot of sense. Yeah. So, Money Inc. Money Inc. is a thing I was three. into. That's a, that's a curveball to me. These childhood favorites. I wouldn't picture a kid liking uh, just a couple of snide uh, white guys who cheated a bunch. I like bad guys. I like cheating. Yeah, you were a weird little kid. Yeah. Weird little kid. One of my favorite things, you get the dichotomy of these two guys. They got to come together and work as a team. You could do it different ways. You could have two quick guys just like pushing each other to be quicker. You have two big... Fat guys just doubling up all that weight, just like extra squishing people. Or uh, you can get a little dynamic that I know is one of your favorites, something Ooh. that you stand by. A good is it a big, big guy, guy, little guy, little guy dynamic. Yeah, buddy. You get varied matches this way. You get the one guy coming in doing little guy stuff. You get the other guy that can do big guy stuff. And, you know, this little guy isn't the littlest guy in the world, and this big guy isn't the biggest guy in the world, but they still had that dynamic, and I really liked watching them uh, work. These guys are the Heart Foundation. You know, Stu's boys. I get that pick. I'll tell you what. It pretty much boils down to one thing. I really like this move they did. Where, you know, they'd both hold on to the top rope. No. And then Brett would pull the rope back. Ooh. And then that big, uh, that big sloppy that big rhino, <laughs> Jim Neidhart, uh. he'd do that slingshot flying tackle over right the top through rope. the air. Knock their opponent down. I love that fucking. That was my favorite double team move of the time in the 1980s. And like that right there is enough to get them on my list. I fucking loved watching that shit. We're going to, this is what we call in the industry, <clears throat> a tease. Okay. But I got thoughts on all that later. Oh, wow. I'm feeling teased. Thoughts on all that Thoughts later. on flying slingshot shoulder tackles. So yeah, these guys, they were, you know, had great matches as the big popular good guy tag team, but I liked them, you know, retroactively now looking back at their bad guy stuff is a lot better earlier when they were first starting off. That stuff's better, but I agree. I didn't understand. Still, the good the guy, they were just the tail end of, the of their heels. tail end of their tag team. I, I was loving them. I was loving them knocking over all those nasty boys and whatnot with their flying shoulder tackle move. Heart attack, their big finish, also a pretty good move. You get a classic big guy lifts a dude up, then little guy jumps through the air and helps him slam him down hard thing. Hey, hold that guy, I'm going to hit him. If you got a big guy, little guy tag team, your finisher has to be the big guy holds the guy up, and then the little guy does something to him. And yeah, like, hold him up, I'm going to hit him. Uh, or at That's least, great. like, a little guy could jump off your shoulders or something, depending on how much of a big yeah. guy and how much of a little guy you're working with. Either True. way, big guy, little guy dynamic. It's a classic. I loved it. I needed to get it on my list. You just uh, set me up here, pal. Perfect. You mentioned my number two a couple sentences ago. Oh, wow. I got him in. You did. I'm carrying on my tradition of liking the bad guys. A mm, couple of guys from Pity City. Oh, baby. Mm, wow. Some sweet, solid pick, graffiti tagged coats, mm-hmm. and some cool sunglasses, missing teeth and, and mohawks, some terrible haircuts, and just spitting everywhere, big round guys, punching people as hard as they can. Mm-hmm. How about them nasty boys? Nasty as they want to be, baby. Yeah, baby. Another uh, another team managed by Jimmy Hart at uh, probably the most memorable point in their career. Jimmy Hart, manager the of champions. He's the coolest. Said it a couple weeks ago. That's... Underrated to the point where he's probably the best manager of all time. And Arn Anderson, the best wrestler of all time. Yeah. This is all. That's, this, yeah. My opinions are getting solidified while we're doing this podcast. Yeah, Jimmy Hart. He gets a lot of love as a manager. Sure, it's sure. Not like he's under. But nobody ever talks about him but as nobody, the best yeah. of all time. But like, if you look. Back at it, like, and I have even seen his Memphis run, which I'm sure was amazing. Oh, sure, but like all these people that you want to put in front of them, but if you look at it, you know, statistically and just with a he was managing unbiased more eye, guys. he was, you he know, was the guy, dude. He was always adding shit to his matches, and back it. when he had that nasty boys graffiti airbrushed yeah. all over his coat and his fucking megaphone, those oh. guys made a great team. That's cool shit, but I love the nasties. Why? Why the is that? Pit stop. Pit stop, take another guy's face, yeah. shove it in your friend's armpit. Yeah. Also, I grew armpit hair way earlier than everybody else I oh, knew. Oh, wow. That's that Greek blood lucky you. flowing through me. Lucky you. Oh, I was a man's man. Mm-hmm. Had a mustache, pit full of arm hair, oh, wow. you know. And Watch out, just, ladies. Yeah. It's like, hey, 
I'm going to grab my little brother's face. Give him that slam pit Slam it in my armpit. That's yeah. funny. Not, not to him. See, you get these stories in the news about some kids, like, gets his Sweet little brother. Poor boy. It's a good thing they, school shooters didn't exist back then. Well, I'm just saying, like, you get you get those stories in the news where, like, a kid, like, power bombs his little brother to death. Oh, yeah, sure. I could never pit stop Davey R. Scheister to death. Well, there's that one time you broke his leg at Christmas. I was his ribs. Oh, sorry. I was his ribs. My mistake. My mistake. Because I stood on them. Uh-huh. And I kept standing on him. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, oh, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Get off. And then I kept standing on yeah. him. And he was kept being like, I can't breathe. Get off. So it's, I did. It's strange that you ended up in law enforcement. Well, here's why it's not, though. Oh, okay. Because he was like, I can't breathe. It's really hurting. Yeah. And then I looked at him. I was like, get up. Uh-huh. You don't want to ruin Christmas, do you? This is on your head. Yeah, and he was like, "No, I, I don't want to yeah. ruin keep it Christmas. a secret until New like, Year's." Yeah, so and then we shut could tell up. Mom your ribs are broken. Shut the fuck up. Work through it, man. Mm-hmm. I gotta tell you, the Nasty Boys. Yeah, they've got the illustrious uh, honor of being the first pro wrestlers who ever interacted with me at a wrestling event. Get the fuck out of here. They were the first ones who ever, like, specifically, like, called back to one of my cat calls, and, like, I got in a little bit of dialogue with them. I almost want to end our friendship right now. Uh Uh-huh. Strictly on the fact that you've never told me this story. Oh, wow, yeah. Uh, It was me and uh, the late Mike Westforth, R.I.P.D., one of my best friends when I was a kid. We got taken to a nice house show over at the uh, arena there at the Valpo University. Oh, um, yeah, we're, uh, we saw nearby, Austin. Nearby, nearby from where we are these days. Doing and, donuts uh, in the quad. That's right. As ATV. Uh, so, yeah, you know, my dad was cool with foul mouth shit because, you know, my dad's a real bro's bro. Well, he wanted you to pick him in the so, divorce. So, me and uh, old eight or nine-year-old Mike Westworth were, you know, taking every opportunity to flip people off and just that's probably... That's cool. We were probably calling them the F word, I would you guys, assume. You guys... Not the F word. <laughs> not guys, the fuck word. I'm I assume you, there was a lot of that oh, uh, late 80s oh, F-word yeah. shit going on, probably. You guys probably looked like a young Nasty Boys Yeah, together. we did a lot, and the Nasty Boys picked up on it, and they were like, look at these little fucking kids. So they were giving it right back to us, just like calling us little shits and telling us that they were going to beat our asses and stuff, and it was pretty good. Like, we walked out of there being like, did you see that? The Nasty Boys were yelling at us. We're kind of like famous now. Did you say something about you're going to bang Skaggs' old lady or something? I don't think I was quite that sophisticated. Uh, with my too bad. That would have been point. a good comeback. Yeah, it would have been pretty good. Like, imagine being like just a fat, coked up, 30-some-year-old uh-huh. wrestler and some 8-year-olds threatening to bang your old lady. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That'd be it. I'd think that would kind of take them back for a moment. If I yeah. ever have any sort of, you know, like traveling back in time scenario going on where I can relive my life and yeah. do it the right way, yeah. that's probably going to be the first thing I change. Yeah, there you go. Good idea. You got a two? Yep. I think we're probably going to have some overlap here because I know how much you love them. But uh, I got to put them on my list because they drove me crazy when I was a kid. Because if there's one thing I love about tag teams, it's synchronicity. Hell, I want we're you to have there. a team name, I want you to have matching outfits. Uh, I want you to do double team moves, and if you could take that teams. to the next level and do things where you're both doing the same move at the same time in perfect synchronicity, yep. that's driving me crazy. Plus, you got the long hair and the rock and roll lifestyle. I'm talking Sean and Marty, the rockers. Oh, yeah. Definitely up there, number two on Not my list. Not that fake-ass rock and roll express. Rock and roll express. The rockers. Sort of the originators of the gimmick, sure. No, they're not. But, you know, prettier, you know, Sean and Marty, younger. Sean and Marty were already living this lifestyle, man. Uh, you know, probably better heads on their shoulders, Sean and Marty. They, they seemed like they just, like, had life figured out a little bit more. Yeah, Marty was considered mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Just, a, just a gentleman's gentleman in the game. But uh, once they got away from those LJN big rubber figures and uh, moved to Hasbro, wherever they are doing, where they did that first wave of just like oh, sort of like yeah. six inch tall, like less rubbery, they can move a little bit more figures. Yeah. Like I gotta, I gotta tell you, two of the first ones I had to pick up that I was super stoked about when those things were Sean and Marty. And I had the, them. Uh, green and purple tights. Uh-huh. Yep. And I was doing a lot of, a lot of matches. Yep. 
in my living room. They had like green tight figures. The every figure had a couple of moves. They could either do like the overhead I could move slam, my arm up and down, yeah. or I could move my foot back a little. <laughs> yeah, or you could do. They had like that little lever on their back. They sure did. And I think uh, I want to until say, you broke it. Wink, 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 wink. Snap. I want to oh, say, fuck. Michael's definitely had it where you could like snap his torso down and it would make him like jump. Oh yeah, and dive. do a little jumping huh. thing a little bit. Yeah. Ha ha! The warrior, War- warrior ultimate King. warrior yeah, had that one too, that so one. he could do that big warrior splash. For sure. Yeah, that's my number one. Memories. That's my number one. Oh boy. Okay, we're uh, running really long. My number yeah, one's right. just demolition. No. Oh. I like their face paint. I yeah. like their red tongues. I liked all their studded S and M gear. I liked the way they stomped people over and over again until they were just beaten into the ground. I liked their theme song. Demolition was great. Uh, 1989, I think it was, Royal Rumble, where they came out one and two, yeah. was one of the coolest things I'd ever seen. Really well, blew my mind. it's going to be a long night. One of, uh, you know, my favorite moments from my wrestling watching childhood. That's my number one. They were a great tag team. They're better than the Road Warriors. I don't care who came first. You're a little older than me. Nah, don't tell, don't tell anybody. That's all right. Just keep that a secret. Uh, by the keep time like a secret. I was watching wrestling, they had jumped the shark a bit. They had Crush already. I think so. Oh, that that was yeah. that was not the peak era. So I was like, these guys seem kind of weird, mm. and they were. Yeah, and that's why I love them. Yeah, but God bless you. But not Crush. He's better. Is a Kona Crush? That was spirited. Hawaiian, uh, hero. Uh, don't worry about how long this went. You're going to be able to shave like a couple minutes from that Kids Nation talk we oh, had. Yeah, I got a good like there's, 20 there's, minutes out of a rambling last there's time. Plenty of oh yeah, there's plenty of shit to gut in here. So all right, I'm we're good. Get through that with a sword real quick. We here. could talk Oscar picks right now. We got enough time. Oh, uh, we got to save something for next week. Oh man, keep them wanting more. I like where your head's at, Absolutely. friend. Absolutely. Where are we next week? Uh, next week we got our go home show to the Royal Rumble. That's primetime wrestling. From January 18th, 1988. Yeah. It's going to be a big deal. Then we come back the week after that. We got the Bunkhouse Stampede. And then we come back the week after that. And we got that uh, Rumble Royal. Man, that's a big couple weeks. Yeah, big couple weeks going. We got a couple big Battle Royal themed events. Quick peek behind the curtain. On the docket. Quick peek behind the curtain. There's not a curtain hung up anywhere. I ask you these questions, not for the fans at home, but just so I know what to watch. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I always have it written down. Yeah. I know I got to keep you on track. Thank you. One it's a of these days, job. we're going to show up not having watched the same uh, no, show. I know. Oh, it. that's going to be our best it's show. Yeah, be the best episode. I bet. Yet. Well, I bet we'll find a way to make it through. Oh, we're still going to record. Yeah, I don't care. Think I care? No, nobody cares. Yeah, but you're going to hear it on Baby Oil and Blow.